Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. Uh, we just finished a great series on the lower extremity for spasticity following a stroke. And this video is really for anyone who has suffered a stroke or a brain injury or has any kind of brain trauma where they have developed some spasticity in the upper extremity. So a little bit different than what we talked about in the last video. In the last video, we talked about the lower extremity and how it likes to go into an extensor pattern. The upper extremity is just the opposite. It likes to go into a flexor pattern after any type of injury to the brain or the spinal cord. So we're going to start unpacking that a little bit in small doses. Just to give you guys a little bit of insight on the arm and how it responds to a brain injury and what that recovery looks like is it's really going to be different for every person. So there's a different part of the brain that's responsible for the upper extremity and then a separate part of the brain that's responsible for the lower extremity. So depending on where the injury was to your brain or where the damage is in your brain, some people get the arm back right away. Some people it takes years. Uh, it all just depends on how severe the brain damage was and where the brain damage was located. So that being said, if you have developed a lot of spasticity or a lot of flexor tone, it's a little bit harder to activate a lot of the muscles and get that control back. But as it comes back, it usually does it. A typical course is in stages. So usually you get the shoulder back first and then the elbow and the last is the hand. Just keep that in mind that it does, your arm does recover in stages or in a progression that usually starts with the shoulder, then you get elbow, then the very last thing is the fine motor of the hand. So that's kind of how we're gonna unpack this group of exercises or this progression just like i did last time so this first progression is going to address the shoulder so one thing that's really important is if you are subluxed and i've talked about this in other videos which means the shoulder the arm bone has dropped out of the socket you have to be very careful with anything that i present to you working on arm movement if you're having pain do not do this activity. That is counterproductive to the brain's healing. Once the brain associates movement with pain, and this is specifically speaking to someone as they're recovering from any kind of damage to the upper motor neuron, which is the brain or the spinal cord, once the brain makes that association between movement and pain, it's gonna make building upon that movement a lot harder. So, that's number one. Number two is what I mentioned about the subluxation. If you are subluxed, it is also counterproductive because you are damaging tissues because the mechanics of the shoulder are not functioning properly, meaning the cup, the ball is not rolling in the cup like it should be. You are just jamming bones into other bones and it is damaging soft tissues, it's damage, damaging muscles, tendons, and that is also counterproductive. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's get to the activities. So just like the last video, I went ahead and went over to the gym and I demonstrated the activities. I'm gonna kind of walk you through it as we go along. That being said, let's head on over to the gym. So since we're addressing the elbow, I'm gonna introduce an elbow immobilizer to you. If I'm gonna focus on the shoulder and isolate shoulder movement, I don't want anything that's going to facilitate that spastic pattern. So most of the time I will immobilize the elbow, meaning I will lock the elbow out straight. I am going to demonstrate putting it on because you can put an elbow immobilizer on by yourself. Be patient. Of course, I didn't want to waste a lot of your time, so I speeded it up a little bit, but you can see the steps and it is possible to get that on yourself.
Now you'll notice my setup for this first activity. So the first exercise, we are gonna just do what we call horizontal abduction, meaning moving the arm out to the side. If you can get a lower chair and a bar height surface, that is gonna be best case scenario for these first few exercises where I show the arm supported on a surface. When you bring that arm up and you support it on the table with the elbow extended, if you can see a divot right here on the top of your shoulder, so wear a tank top or a sleeveless shirt, that means you are subluxed. If it looks like the arm is down or your therapist has told you that you are subluxed, really make sure the table is nice and high, not too high, because then you run into some other problems, but you want that arm, you want that arm to be supported right at the armpit, and that is critical. So you want a table that comes up literally right to the armpit. So if you need to use a counter, use a counter, and then just adjust your chair. So maybe sit in a stand, like a regular height chair up at a counter. So for this first one, you're just gonna move the arm out to the side. Now, I apologize for that blue board. It's just, it's part of the table. So you definitely want something completely flat because you wanna remove as much friction as possible, especially if you have a lot of tone or spasticity. Then you're gonna turn, and now we're gonna work abduction. So again, if you are subluxed, you are going to be jamming a lot of structures into each other if you do this. So if a therapist has told you you're subluxed, do not do this. But if you have um, if good approximation, which means the arm bone is in the socket where it needs to be, then this you're working that abduction. So you're working lifting the arm out to the side, really just working on your range of motion at this point. So here I'm gonna show it again. You can see my arm bone is all the way up in the socket and it is rolling very nice in the socket. And then this is just another one I added. This is really just trunk rotation, but I always add a couple of exercises where you use your uninvolved arm, holding your involved arm. And so now we're working shoulder flexion. So we worked moving the arm out to the side, and now we're working lifting the arm up. So this is kind of a beginning step for reaching. If you are weaker and you need to remove a little bit of that friction, then you can use a foam roller like I'm doing here. Again, same thing as you want whatever your arms are resting on, you want to be right at about armpit level if possible. And what that does is it gives you good approximation at the shoulder joint, which is that ball and socket. So you want the head of the arm really sitting in that socket really well because that's how it rolls, right? So we want this, if it's down, it's not gonna roll and you're just gonna jam the arm up into bone on bone. When it's in the socket, it rolls really nice. So this is just another angle from the side. You can see up in the corner, my shoulders are level with each other. I'm not grasping my hands right here, but you're probably gonna wanna grasp your hands to help that movement a little bit. So here's one last one. I think I said two at the beginning, but there were actually a few more. So here's one last one that I'm doing for the arm. This is another isolated shoulder movement. So part of that spastic pattern is the arm likes to come in like this and rotate in and that does cause a lot of shoulder pain. So now we gotta start working on rotating that shoulder out and we're just gonna isolate this joint. So that's why we immobilized the elbow to keep the arm straight and we're literally just working that external rotation. So if you'll notice a lot of times when you try and go lift your arm up, your hand is pointing down and in. That's really bad, it puts a lot of stress on the shoulder, um, but a lot of times that's, from, that's part of that pattern. So, we are gonna work on starting to rotate that arm out, which makes it much easier to lift your arm, but that is critical. If you don't work that external rotation, it's gonna be very hard to get that reaching back. And here you go. I just demonstrate that a little bit. So with the elbow immobilized, I'm just rotating. You see, I'm trying not, I, even I kind of drop my shoulder a little bit. I'm trying not though to move, bend my trunk. 
I'm trying to just to rotate that elbow out to the side. Now for this next exercise, I'm using a couple additional props. Um, you're gonna need a strap. Uh, I, I love these Nylatex straps. I've used them a lot in other videos, um, but it, you're gonna need a strap to hold your hand um, onto the device that we're gonna use. So the two pieces of equipment are this a strap and a Pilates ring. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use that strap to just wrap that Pilates ring around your hand so that you can keep a hold on it. And here I'm just showing you what we're gonna do with it. So that keeps your arms in a great position. It allows you to use your other arm to help you with your uninvolved arm. And you're just going to reach. Again, if you have shoulder pain, do not do this activity. Um, you will notice my shoulder stays in contact with the mat. A lot of times that shoulder will lift off the mat, but you really want the shoulder blade, the um, shoulder to be in contact with the mat. And now you notice for the first one, I stopped right at vertical. If that's okay and it doesn't hurt, you can try and go a little bit overhead. But again, only if you don't have pain. And the reason this Pilates ring is so important is remember how I said earlier, the arm likes to turn in when you lift. That Pilates ring with your arm strapped to it really helps to keep that arm rotated out, which is critical when you're reaching overhead. All right, so for this next exercise, it's gonna take a little bit of explanation. For this next one, you're gonna be laying on your involved side. So with that arm immobilized or that elbow straight, you are going to lay on your involved side. Now there's a couple of critical things that you need to pay attention to. When you lay on your involved side, if you get all that pressure right on your shoulder, it's gonna create a little bit of damage on the shoulder. So what we do, and you'll notice I do it in the video, is you need to what we call protract the shoulder. So you need to actually bring the shoulder forward for this exercise. And I know a lot of times we're working on retraction. That's a whole nother story. We're working on bringing that shoulder blade back because that usually is the area that's weak. But for positioning for this exercise, you wanna bring that shoulder forward. That protects the shoulder. So we're gonna be laying on your involved side, but to protect that shoulder, we bring that shoulder blade forward. And now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna like open your arms up like a book. Now, believe it or not, you're actually using your involved arm even though you're moving your uninvolved arm. It's a great way to start engaging that involved side a little bit. Laying on that side is actually also helps to build awareness on that side of your body. That's why it's such a great activity. You can see I do it again right there as I protract that shoulder so that I don't roll right on top of it. And then again, just opening up like a book. Notice also in this that my knees are bent. That helps to keep you a little bit more balanced. A progression would be to have your legs straight, which we'll do on the next exercise. But having your legs bent like that will help to keep you balanced. And then you notice on this one, we're gonna do leg lifts. Now notice my uninvolved arm is on top of my involved arm. That helps to build awareness in that involved side. But what happens when I start moving my leg is it throws me off balance and it's actually that arm that is helping to keep me balanced. So believe it or not, it's my involved arm that's preventing me from losing my balance as I move my leg. So again, you're building awareness on that arm, but you're also starting to develop some strength and control on that shoulder. Just another angle, you'll see my 
uninvolved arms on top of my involved arm. And as I bring that knee forward, it's throwing me off balance, which is forcing my arm to help to keep me balanced. Again, you'll see I'm protracting that shoulder. Again, gotta always protect that shoulder. All right, and now we are gonna do kind of what I call a snow angel. So you're just gonna bring that arm up out to the side. Now notice my shoulder is not coming up towards my ear. I am literally isolating just arm movement. This is critical. This is actually to unlearn lifting your shoulder up to bring the arm out. So laying on your back takes gravity out of it. And then I want you to pay special attention that my palm is facing up when I do this. That's also very critical because that is that external rotation that's rotating that arm out that I talked about earlier that's extremely critical. You do not want your palm facing down or facing towards your feet. You want your palm facing up towards the ceiling. If that means you can't go as far out to the side, that's okay. Just don't go as far out to the side. That rotation, that external rotation with that hand up is extremely important. And then this is just what I call like a little bonus activity that I threw in here on the end. If you are on your side and you're already there, look again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to protect that shoulder, protect, protract that shoulder. And now if you're extremely in an extreme flexor spasm, this side lying position is a great position to start relaxing that bicep, which is usually extremely spastic or has a lot of tone in it. So it's really doing that involuntary flexion. flexing that elbow up. And now I'm just using my uninvolved arm, I'm just rubbing it. I'm just kind of trying to get that elbow to relax, get that bicep to relax. And really just get that arm as straight as possible. That rubbing it is extremely valuable. It builds awareness on that side of your body. I highly recommend that. If the arm comes back up, you just do it again. Try, the faster you go, the more it might spring back up. So just try and go really slow. And again, just another angle, protracting that shoulder again. Rolling onto my side and just rubbing that arm. Really just turning the hand over if I can. If I can reach all the way down, reaching down towards those fingers and just rubbing that forearm, just really deep pressure, just trying to get it to relax. Again, from a flexed position, I'm still just working it out. So I hope you guys found today's tutorial helpful. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Get excited. We're off the lower extremity for just a little bit because I got a lot of comments, a lot of people that were interested in some arm exercises. So that's the direction we're going to be going for the next few videos. I am throwing in some just general balance activities. I've had some other messages from 
other patients looking for uh, some balance activities. So I am going to throw some balance videos in there, but definitely stay tuned. I'm at least going to be doing one arm video a week for the next several weeks because it is such a problematic area for so many people. So get excited about that. If you like this video and you want to see more arm videos, please comment below stroke. Please put in the comments below hashtag stroke arm. This is how I'm keeping track of which videos people like and want to see more videos, more exercises or more videos uh, in that area. So definitely do that. Again, I thank you for watching. Please be patient with yourself. Enjoy these activities. Try not to get frustrated and you will see improvement. You just got to stay the course, stick with it. Trust me on this. A lot of times it may not seem like you're doing a lot, but you are. So just stick with it. And until next time, you guys all have a great evening and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.